loads of dope or whatever it may be that you're bringing into this country, uh, San Antonio is a big staging point where then they can they can just they they can hit smaller distribution routes from there. But the fact is that a lot of what's going on on the border comes right through our county limits uh, here, and so we are. Uh, working always working diligently to make sure that that we're working with surrounding law enforcement federal state and local and so we wanted to get an eye on the on the issue at hand in in uh del rio so yesterday we flew out with uh, texas dps they were able to fly us out in one of their planes uh they're making they're making daily trips out there yesterday so or they're making daily trips out there every day from the san antonio airport and so we just hitched a ride with an existing flight uh we were once we got there uh, we were able to land at, at, a, at an airstrip that they have access to. We were there in the hangar with them, uh, with the DPS pilots, uh, until uh, a uh, helicopter became available, and we hitched a ride with one of the helicopters as they were going about one of their regular patrols. And what we saw was pretty eye-opening. Um, they took us for, for a, 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 on a recon mission over the, the bridge area, uh, and the sheer manpower that's there is it's, – it's, it's it's we were pretty awestruck by the by the sheer numbers of of federal agents from from uh, uh, border patrol and of course state troopers from DPS that were there. They're doing a great job uh, of of handling the sheer mass of uh, the sea of humanity, I'll call it, that's coming across from the border. Now the number that was there yesterday, I believe, was between eight and ten thousand. Uh, that was how many how many folks were staying under that bridge at that time. But there's a steady flow of people back and forth. Uh, while we were there, we could actually see down below, although we never got on the ground, we could see down below that there's a rope that they uh, somebody fashioned from one bank of the river to the other, and foot traffic is going back and forth. Uh, so what they're doing is they're walking, wading through the river, uh, but they're using the rope as a guide to kind of walk themselves through to keep their balance. It's kind of like a railing, so to speak. Um, they're grabbing food from the Mexican side and then coming back over to the American side. And so it's just a pretty much of a free flow. There's really nobody impeding their movement one way or the other that we could see. Uh, you know, we we could see that the the the, uh, the troopers and the agents that were out there were just kind of monitoring uh, the movements, but but really making no move to interfere or to stop them in any way. We also saw, and we weren't sure what this was, but we saw an airboat, a, a patrol, an airboat on the Mexican side of the river. Uh, being put into the water and then patrolling, but we don't know who that was, if it was Mexican authorities or, or what. Not to mention, you still saw the normal, uh, what the DPS pilot described to us is just people, uh, recreation, regular uh, recreation, people just using the river for hanging out, fishing, doing whatever. So that that's still out there as well. Some of the scary takeaways, to be quite honest with you, is that uh, the, the folks that we were with were describing to us that, look, all of our efforts are concentrated here. So we really don't know with any degree of certainty what's going on a mile that way, a mile that way, or 10 miles that way or that way, for that matter. Uh, so much effort is con being concentrated on this area here. So that was one of the takeaways from it is just that, that we're taking our eyes off other parts of the river, other parts of the border, uh, to, to make sure that, that these folks that are here, this big uh, mass of humanity is, is safe and sound. There is no police presence that I could see under the bridge itself. It's set up like a shanty town. Uh, there's tents and shacks and, and whatnot. These folks, pretty resourceful people. They're using the, the sugar cane from the riverbank uh, to, to put up tent poles and they're, they're making their own uh, shanty town. But the scary part is that there's really no law enforcement presence under the bridge. Uh, no way to tell what's going on under the bridge, whether people are, are committing acts of violence uh, or, or anything under there. I mean, obviously, there's law enforcement presence within earshot, within eye shot, but they're not in there waiting amongst the people. Um, you know, I asked if, if disease was a, was a concern. Obviously, it is. We don't know who exactly who these people are. The vast majority of them are from Haiti. The vast majority of them, I'm sure, are, are, are great people that are just here to look for a better life. But there really is no way to tell at this point, uh, absent a whole lot of vetting, if there are some bad actors in there or if there's uh, people from, from hostile nations that are, that are uh, intermingling with these folks from Haiti. And so there, there really is just no way to tell. Uh, you know, being a curious person, I said, well, what's to stop other countries then from um, cleaning out their prisons, just sending every prison inmate in the, in the country 
uh, toward the United States. And, and I was told there really isn't a way to tell that and really no way to prevent it at this time. Now, I was told that they are um, basically bringing people in, vetting them, and then deporting a lot of, a lot of the folks right back to uh, their, their, their country of origin. Uh, while I, I can see where that would be problematic for those folks, some of the things that I was told is that these people, uh, interestingly enough, didn't just decide last week to pop up in the United States. Uh, some of them have actually been on this road for four years to get to the point where they are now. Uh, one story that I was told is that one man, and I can tell you that she's probably not the only one, paid upwards of $12,000 to be smuggled to the point where he is now. And so to him, I'm sure it's a big problem that he's just being, he's being put on a plane and, and being sent back. Uh, not to say I agree or disagree with with that rationale of take, sending him back, but I could see where somebody like that would it'd be a great cause for concern because I'm sure twelve thousand dollars is not easy to come by uh, in Haiti or in some of the some of the other countries that we're dealing with. So it's interesting to see. We did see some government planes taking off from the small airstrip that we were in. Uh, actually, we saw one a uh, government plane. What we what we thought was a government plane when we were leaving San Antonio a plane flying out with what we thought was, was immigrants. It turns out, I believe that we were correct in that assessment. Uh, and then when we were in, on the ground in, in Del Rio, we saw several other government planes leaving uh, loaded up with folks as well. So those are just a few of the takeaways. Uh, I'll open it up to whatever questions you all might have for me. Okay. Um, Puedo dar la, la, la informa, información en español también. Ayer yo y el oficial Johnny García, nosotros fuimos de viaje a, para Del Río, uh, para el punto de entrada con, con en la frontera del, al sur con Del Río. Uh, nosotros fuimos, uh, cortesía de la policía estatal, uh, uh, Texas DPS, nosotros fuimos en un avión de aquí. Cuando nos íbamos uh, de, de, de despedida de San Antonio, nosotros vimos un, un avión del gobierno, se piensa que era del gobierno llevando inmigrantes, uh, se supone para otra parte uh, de, de aquí del aeropuerto de San Antonio, pero también ya cuando llegamos al del río, en el avión, nosotros nos subimos a un helicóptero, nosotros en esos momentos vimos otros aviones, uh, se supone del gobierno que iban llevando personas, no se sabe de dónde, pero sí, sí, sí se sabe que los estaban llevando del, del río en, ese punto, en esos, esos momentos. Nosotros uh, fuimos y, nos, y vimos lo que estaba uh, pasando en el, en el puente, uh, en Del Río, en el helicóptero. Nosotros vimos uh, aproximadamente 8,000, 10,000 personas uh, bajo del puente, pero también vimos que uh, había personas pasando para atrás para México y luego regresándose a los Estados Unidos. Se supone que ellos estaban trayendo mandado, uh, comida, uh, cosas así de México as, as, para atrás para los Estados Unidos para su encampamento nos, uh, unas, parece una ciudad chica que ellos uh, establecieron uh, abajo del puente uh, y pues se supone que ellos estaban comprando comida para, para comer ahí abajo del, del puente uh, nosotros no vimos que los agentes estaban tratando de pararlos de, de regresar a los Estados Unidos, sino que ahí simplemente estaban viendo para asegurar que todo estaba pasando sin violencia, sin nada, uh, y tratando de ayudar a estas personas. Uh, nos, a nosotros lo que, lo, lo que nos impresionó mucho fue que tanto esfuerzo en ese punto, en el puente, pero no se sabe realmente lo que está pasando una milla para acá, diez millas para acá, realmente no se sabe porque todos los esfuerzos están ahí. Entonces, eso para mí me quiere decir que eso me afecta a mi condado aquí. Entonces, por eso me da gusto uh, poder decir que nosotros fuimos para allá para ver lo que está pasando, para ver cómo nos afecta aquí en el condado Béjar. Asuntos de la frontera son asuntos de este condado. Uh, entonces, todo lo que pasa allí tiene chance de, de afectarnos aquí a nosotros en el condado de Béjar. Entonces, por eso yo quise ver todo lo todo personalmente para poder uh, averiguar qué se necesita aquí para proteger mi, a mi condado. He estado hablando yo con otros sheriffes de otros condados uh, que, que, que están alrededor del, del condado Beja y todos estamos trabajando juntos ahorita para asegurar que lo que está pasando allá no nos vaya a afectar eh, de alguna mal, uh, mala manera aquí en nuestro condado.
Uh, any questions about any questions about the uh, about the Hi, Chair. Uh, Hi, Chair. <laughs> it's Alejandra with WAI KDB. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Pretty good. I know you mentioned that you were there yesterday and the situation looked pretty calm that the uh, CBP agents were not impeding or stopping the families from going to either side. We have started seeing some of those agents on horseback treating some of these migrants with reins, what looks like to be whips, using them against them. Can you speak a little bit to that and did you see any of that going on? The, actually, the mounted patrol people uh, that I saw were, were a bit further back. They were hanging back. So uh, I, I don't know if we have pictures of the, of the shot in question, but we did take some pictures there. So uh, I think that area, I saw that same video you're talking about, Alejandra, and, and I think that that's right there where I described that rope, where they're coming back out onto the riverbank on the American side. I think that's where that spot happened, where that, that incident happened. I didn't see any of that. Uh, so when we were there, we saw a line of white cars. And I don't know what B-roll they're showing you, if, they, if they're able to show you any of the, the, the B-roll that we shot. But um, there's a row of white cars that are there. I think those are Border Patrol vehicles. And then the, the horse patrol that I saw were basically on the other side of, the, of those vehicles. I don't really remember seeing any up close to the river. And I didn't, I didn't recall seeing anybody interacting with uh, with the public. I did see one agent on horseback uh, running at a gallop, but I think he was running up to meet up with another agent behind that line of cars. So I didn't, I didn't see any of what I, what we saw on TV yesterday uh, as far as those tactics being employed. Hey, Sheriff, it's Mike with WOAI News. Um, we know that this uh, surge in uh, Haitian migrants is coming at a time when there's also a lot of drugs, narcotics coming across the border. If, mm -hmm. there's a, if there's a surge to Del Rio with law enforcement, you mentioned how that leaves other areas of the border um, less protected. What effect do you think that this will have on the drug trade in Bear County? Well, so interestingly enough, Mike, uh, yesterday one of the things that we talked about with the with the the troopers, uh, I didn't really talk to any border patrol personnel. I talked to mostly state troopers, but they mentioned that a common tactic with with smuggling uh, groups is that they will have a group of people that whether the people know it or not, they're going to be surrendered to law enforcement. So the coyote, the coyotes know, okay, this group of people are gonna be the quote unquote sacrificial lambs, right? We're gonna surrender them to law enforcement. And then so they'll bring across, across a group of people that have paid money by the way, but not knowing that they're gonna be surrendered to law enforcement. But while they know that that's going to distract law enforcement, they will, they will confront you with bodies that are gonna be surrendered while they flank you with dope and, and uh, you know, other things. And so I asked the question, the obvious question that Beg's asking is, well, they're overwhelming us with huge numbers here. Could this be the diversion for something bigger? And they said, absolutely. But the thing that's scary is nobody really knows at this point, or at least they weren't telling us at this point, what's that other thing? Could it be dope? Could it be terrorist activity? We just don't know. Uh, and so we've got to be prepared on our end, since we know that the, the flanks aren't as covered as they should be, we've got to be prepared. So starting this weekend, when we heard about the, the Border Patrol checkpoints being unmanned, thankfully they're being manned now, but we became, we, we became aware of it and we put our highway interdiction folks, I do have highway drug interdiction folks, that that's what they do. I put them on the highways and uh, we've got special operations troops as well that we utilize on the, on the uh, for gang unit, gang activity, uh, organized crime activity. I ask that some of them be redirected. And then of course, we've got a traffic, traffic unit of traffic deputies that that's what they do as well. You know, aside from the, the checkpoints being uh, unmanned for, for, that, for a day or a couple hours or whatever it turned out to be, imagine this as well. I mean, uh, the, the deterrent effect as you're traveling down the highway of a black and white DPS uh, trooper, right? Uh, you're not going to speed as much because you see those very distinctive black and whites. Well, a good majority of those black and whites are now on the border so that they're not out conducting their routine traffic enforcement. And so obviously that leaves uh, the highways open to speeding or road rage or whatever it may be that they that the deterrent effect is usually there. So so obviously our troops are taking uh, great care to make sure that we're, we're maintaining a more visible presence uh, on the highways. So we've got our traffic unit on that. 
Uh, we've also got our patrol uh, folks that we've let, uh, I let my, my chiefs know this morning on patrol that look, yes, definitely handle your calls for service on patrol, but if you've got any downtime, jump on the highway and just cruise around and, and, and make sure that by our visible presence, we're deterring uh, bad actors on, on traffic enforcement as, as well. Um, if you don't mind, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind transitioning over to our uh, PSA. We produced a PSA uh, a couple weeks ago. That it's, been, it's been in the works that uh, it's a Spanish language PSA. For those of you that don't understand what's being said, basically what this is, is this is a message from me uh, to anybody that, that may be considering uh, making a trip, uh, you know, being, being uh, moved over, undocumented immigrants being moved over into the country. I'm letting them know some of the hazards that exist and that, may, that this may not be the best situation for them. Basically, yesterday in hearing uh, uh, Director Mayorkas, uh, a lot of what we put in our video uh, are, are basically the exact same thing he was saying yesterday. And so I felt that it was timely to put out. So we'll go ahead and play that PSA for you all, and I'll open it up to whatever questions you might have. Algo así, la nueva revuelta de Univisión, ¿me escucha? Sí, yes, sí, yes, señor. Eh, solo quiero eh, hacer una pregunta, como, como ser humano y como o, oficial, ¿qué, ¿qué impresión o qué opinión tiene? No sé si vio las fotografías de oficiales de Border Patrol eh, en caballos, eh, asustando inmigrantes, conteniendo los que ya le dieron la vuelta al país y que incluso la Casa Blanca anunció que va a girar una investigación. Eh, cuando usted vio esas imágenes... ¿Qué, ¿Qué interpreta, qué siente como, como persona y como oficial? Bueno, no puedo comentar mucho en eso porque pues, realmente nuestros caballos que nosotros usamos en patrulla no están entrenados para eso, para ese tipo de actividad. Y pues por, por ob razones obvias, uh, uno, uno puede lastimar a una persona que está eh, a pie. Entonces para nosotros, nosotros no usamos nuestros caballos así. Uh, sí los usamos en patrulla de vez en cuando, pero, pero no se trata de, de prevenir la entrada a ninguna parte. Uh, entonces, no es algo que yo no puedo comentar uh, mucho en eso. Uh, were you all able to watch that PSA? Okay. We did, but uh, there so wasn't the reason, any sound. 
I'm, there wasn't any sound. I mean, no. I don't know if it played for others, but it didn't play for us. Um, no. Sheriff, one quick yeah. question though, while you guys work out the, the sound, hopefully we can watch that again. Um, theoretically, how soon could these drugs make it here into our own backyard in Bear County? Uh, well, it's a, it's about a, uh, on any part, different parts of the border, anywhere from an hour and a half to three hours. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not very long at all. Uh, you know, one of the concerns on Saturday when I, I was talking to my chiefs about the, uh, checkpoints not being manned for a little while. Uh, one of the things that, that was mentioned well is, is not all drugs that are coming through San Antonio right now came straight from the border. Many times what they'll do, for example, is just to, just to give you round numbers, maybe they'll, they're only able to cross over 100 pounds uh, of drugs, any given drug at any given time. Well, what they'll do is they'll cross 100 pounds and then another 100 pounds and another 100 pounds and they'll warehouse it somewhere, somewhere between here and the border. Uh, so let's say Dilly, Catula, you know, Carrizo Springs, wherever, anywhere between here and the border, there may be warehouses, stash houses, where they're saving these 100 pound loads until such time as they get two or 3,000 pounds together, and then they make the trip further inland. Well, we, we got to talking amongst our chiefs, and a lot of my chiefs and I have all worked in undercover assignments, narcotics assignments. Some have been federal agents and said, well, I guarantee you right now, as we speak, warehouses are being emptied out, and they're probably throwing them into a U-Haul and heading this way. And so that was why we made it a point to get that uh, increased presence out on the highways. Uh, so to answer your question, is it, it really takes no time at all for, for drugs to get here from the border. Sure, this is Vanessa uh, Croy from Ken 5. I have a quick question for you. Yes, ma'am. Um, Galveston County has um, some constables, uh, deputy out in Kenny County, and with the checkpoints being closed, a lot of DPS have been sending me, hundreds of DPS are in Del Rio right now. Do you have any plans to send any Bear County deputies either to Valverde County or the outlying counties uh, that may be even more affected now with uh, less law enforcement patrolling the highways. Do you have any plans to send any Bear County deputies uh, to lend assistance? I, I, at this point, no. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've been I've been in communications with with uh, out outlying uh, sheriffs. As a matter of fact, this morning I spoke to to Sheriff uh, Joe Frank Martinez uh, about that very thing, and and he's indicating they've got what they need over there. Uh, you know, we are not border patrol agents. With that being said. Local officers, uh, Texas peace officers, really have no authority to detain somebody based solely upon immigration status. And, and quite frankly, uh, a lot of the DPS folks that we talk to are very, very cognizant of that fact. And so our, our powers are limited anyway. Uh, with that being said, uh, you know we, we have extended our, our assistance if they need extra bodies for whatever, whatever may be needed if it's, if it's in a non-border patrol type uh, function, knowing that our, our powers are, are limited. Um, we, we've extended it, but at this point, we don't have any plans to send anybody. We have that, that request has not been made. So we're concentrating our efforts on, on protecting our, our county here. Sheriff lo dijo en inglés, pero nos puede hablar en español acerca de la situación en los checkpoints o puntos de revisión y también qué están haciendo sus agentes localmente para ayudar a la situación. Sí, pues por algunos, algunos, algunas horas uh, o días, los, los, uh, los puntos de, de revisión uh, no, está, no tenían agentes federales uh, uh, presentes. Entonces, ya cuando nos dimos cuenta de eso, uh, de miembros de la prensa, uh, nosotros empezamos a, a aumentar el número de oficiales que nosotros teníamos aquí en nuestras carreteras. Se sabe que, que uh, muchas veces, uh, pues es posible que alguien que va llevar drogas o, o lo que sea uh, para este pe país, uh, se van a detener un poco, van a pensarlo lo, dos veces antes de entrar si hay agentes en esas, uh, esos puntos. Ya cuando no hay nadie, entonces ya se les hace muy fácil entrar al, al país con, con lo que sea, con cualquier tra contrabando. Entonces nosotros aumentamos el número de oficiales que, que teníamos en las carreteras. Ahora, Uh, ahora nos han dicho que, que ya hay agentes federales ahí en, esas, en esos puntos, pero entonces todavía nosotros estamos al tanto de proteger a nuestra comunidad. No nomás de drogas, pero también sabiendo que la patrulla de carreteras, uh, DPS, ellos también están ahí. Entonces no hay, no hay uh, el, el mismo número de oficiales patrullando nuestras carreteras por personas uh, manejando ebrias, manejando a muy alto, a alta velocidad, uh, 
Uh, entonces, nosotros estamos patrullando simplemente por eso, para, para el esfuerzo de las, las leyes de tráfico. El alguacil del condado Valde me dice que él teme que más inmigrantes vengan en el tren porque allá estaban llevando a cabo revisiones que ya no están llevando a cabo en este momento. Aquí en San Antonio, ¿usted teme que se vean más incidentes de camiones de carga o de qué tipo cree que podría verse más? Para mí, nosotros, noso, nosotros nos estamos cuidando de las cargas de drogas. Realmente es lo que estamos buscando nosotros. Nosotros no somos agentes de inmigración. Uh, nosotros dejamos que los, los agentes de inmigración se, se eh, que ellos se encarguen de eso. Uh, nosotros solamente quisiéramos uh, uh, parar uh, las drogas que entren y las armas y, y carros uh, robados que vayan al sur. Entonces, es lo que nos estamos concentrando ahorita, nosotros. ¿Sus oficiales están trabajando más allá de los límites del condado de Bejar para ayudar a otros oficiales o solamente es aquí? Solamente, solamente en este condado, uh, uh, yo he estado hablando con otros sheriffes de, de otros condados al sur, en el, en el condado de Hidalgo, en el condado de Valverde. Ahorita ellos no me han pedido ayuda de eso, pero sí estamos en comunicaciones y ellos ya saben tanto como yo sé uh, que si ellos necesitan ayuda, me pueden, me pueden hablar a cualquier hora y yo les mando a uh, oficiales, tanto como yo sé que, que si yo necesito ayuda aquí, que ellos me, me van a mandar ayuda con lo que se pueda. Okay. Well, we apologize that the PSA wasn't able to be, uh, you, you weren't able to hear it. Sorry. On Facebook, it was good. Okay, on Facebook, it was good. Uh, for the members of the media that were trying to watch it on Zoom, we're actually going to send that PSA out shortly. I am going to ask the Spanish-speaking media to try to help us distribute that uh, to the South. If, if you all have any national... Uh, links with the media, which I'm I know you all do, uh, we're going to ask that you consider helping us to distribute that to your national news desk and help us get the information out. Again, the, the goal here overall is to let people know that just crossing over is not a good idea. Uh, you're, you're facing arrest uh, on misdemeanor charges. I've got my own opinion on that as well. Uh, but you're also uh, putting yourself at the mercy of these coyotes that don't care about human life. We heard a couple of horror stories yesterday. Uh, from, from some of the DPS folks that we were with, of uh, you know, horror stories that they know of, where these coyotes will drive, drive undocumented immigrants around just there by the, by the border. They think they're making the trip to further inland. And then at one point, the, the, the coyotes will stop the, the 18 wheeler, the tanker truck, or the U Haul, or the car, whatever it is, and say, All right, you guys walk this way 10 miles, and you're in Houston. And these people have no clue that they're actually about 350 miles away from Houston. They'll start walking disoriented, no water, and very soon they succumb to the elements. And next thing you know, we've got either a dead person or several dead people out in the middle of the desert, and they may not be found at all. Uh, and so that's exactly what I'm trying to prevent by putting this information out. You know, do I feel like my PSA is going to miraculously stop uh, you know, folks from putting themselves at risk? Well, no, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not naive enough to believe that, but maybe it'll help one or two or a hundred people think twice before putting themselves in the hands of these coyotes. We saw what happened last week. I mean, those two little kids that were left abandoned on the side of the river, that's the kind of thing I'm trying to prevent. Um, these, these coyotes, these cartels are ripping them off for, for think about how, if you're working in Mexico or, or El Salvador or Nicaragua, how long it takes you to scrape together five or $6,000 that these people are gonna take from you and guarantee you passage to Houston or San Antonio or Dallas And then they're going to leave you in the middle of the desert somewhere or, or sexually assault you or your loved ones, uh, you know, and then, and then dump you somewhere to die. Uh, I, just, I just want people to realize that it's, it's not that simple. It's not that easy. And, and it's just not safe for them to try to make that trip. As much as I believe that the vast majority of these immigrants are just good people looking for a better life, I'm tired of, of getting 911 calls where they're crammed in the back of a, of a tanker truck Uh, thinking that they're going to die or, or, you know, in the middle of snow vid when they were in the back of that 18 wheeler that we stopped over there off of, uh, you know, at 281 South. Uh, I'm just tired of hearing about calls like that. And I just felt that I've got to try to do something. Maybe it'll help. Maybe it won't, but at least I can try. Okay. Uh, are there any other questions y'all about these, these bullet points we hit on? Well, look, just rest assured that, that here in Bear County, we, re we recognize again that because of our proximity to the border and our, our 
you know, geographic location and, you know, the fact that other law enforcement agencies are tied up. We're doing everything in our power uh, to work, not just uh, within our county, but we're working with neighboring sheriff's offices and, and my little sheriff's network that I've got going on. It's pretty formidable. Uh, I've got just about every sheriff uh, in this part of the state on speed dial, and we're constantly texting and calling back and forth uh, to make sure that does anybody need anything or how we can best work together. So rest assured that, 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 that we realize that as sheriffs, we may be the first line or the last line of defense, but we're working together and it's not about red and blue um, at this point. It's about the gold in this badge. And it's about knowing that if our part of the state, our county is not functioning at 100%, then the whole state suffers. And if that happens, then the whole country suffers and, and we're not gonna let that happen. So uh, just, I appreciate y'all tuning in today. Again, my ask is that y'all help me get this message out on this PSA. And let's see if we can't save some lives together. Thank you all so much. God bless.